Okay, welcome back. So now we're going to focus in on our data a little bit here. Okay, so we we've, we've heard this word, we've all heard this word data, right? But but what is data? Well, a loose definition might be something like this, facts or numbers with a context, all right? Context is going to be important to us. Right? And also notice this this point here, facts, right? A lot of people just think of numbers when they hear data, right? But it's not always just numbers. You could think of data as information, all right? A word cloud that I found dealing with data looks something like this, all right? Data, this term is often associated with this phrase that's hot right now, data analysis, all right? So what is data analysis? Well, depending on where you look, you might find a few different definitions. Um, a, a textbook that I saw, the definition looked like this. If you want to take a minute to read that, Wikipedia says data analysis is this. Right? But most definitions of data analysis that you'll find in some way will have these three ideas involved. Collect, organize, and analyze. Right? And it is, it is a process. Right? So let's formally lay out that process. All right, step one, we got to figure out if we're starting from the ground up, what's our question, right? And who's, who's going to answer this question for us? What is this population? Can I get to the population? That kind of thing. All right? Then we have to collect our data. All right, do we have access to the population? Do I need to take a sample? If I do need to take a sample, what's some good te sampling techniques that we can use? We'll see that down the road. All right, so once I've collected the data, now I'm ready to organize the data with descriptive statistics. And finally, we'll draw some conclusions using inferential statistics. All right, this is a bunch of terminology that we've seen before. Okay, and notice this is a process here. We have to do it in this, in this order. Right? Because if I, and I have to do each step correctly, right? Because if I collect the data, right, but I don't collect it in a good way, okay, well then, even if I use correct descriptive methods, correct inferential methods, right, if I didn't collect a good data set, my, my results may not be any good, right? So I need to collect data well, I need to organize it well to see exactly what I've got going on, then I can analyze it with inferential statistics. Okay, so that's our data analysis process. So what types of data might we work with? Okay, we've probably heard this idea, qualitative versus quantitative data. Okay, sometimes quantitative data, you may see it called numerical data. Sometimes qualitative data, you may see it called categorical data. But each of these different types of data we're going to have different methods that work better for each. Okay, so the first thing I got to do, I got to be able to look at a variable and, and classify it into its data type. Then I can decide how to proceed through that data analysis process. Okay. So quantitative data, also again called, called numerical data sometimes, right, is like kind of the classic data that you think of some sort of numbers with a mathematical context. All right, so we can further break down quantitative data into discrete and continuous data. Discrete versus continuous is all about countability. All right, discrete data is countable. Okay, continuous data is uncountable. It's typically infinite, usually defined on intervals. Okay, so the big thing I got to think about discrete versus continuous is it countable. My other type of data, qualitative, or I think it's it's nice to call it categorical data. Okay, so categorical data, right, is just data that divides individuals into groups. Right there's so when we're thinking about qualitative data. Qualitative data could be a lot of things, right? This could be text, images, 
right? But we're focusing on a specific type of, of qualitative data, specifically categorical data. All right. Now, personally, I like to, you may see quantitative data called numerical data, but personally, I like to say quantitative and categorical because I think calling quantitative data numerical data is a little bit of a misnomer. So why is that? Because just because it's a number doesn't make it quantitative. You can have a number that's categorical data, right? It's possible for numbers to group people into categories, right? Identifying type numbers. Okay. So cat but either way categorical data is data that puts individuals into categories. All right? I could further break down categorical data into nominal categorical data and ordinal categorical data. Ordinal categorical data is data where the categories of that variable has some sort of natural order to it. Nominal, it does not. Okay, another further classification of types of data is what's referred to as levels of measurement. Okay, our first two levels of measurement we just talked about nominal and ordinal. Okay, but as we're going through these ideas, notice this stair step pattern. Right? Each time we step up a level of measurement, right, we're adding one more criteria here. Okay, so nominal categorical variable is just there in name only. They're divided up into categories with random names. And that's all we got. Ordinal, we've got these categories with names that have an order to them. Okay, next on our levels of measurement, so some, some simple examples of nominal might be something like hair color, which we've discussed previously. And ordinal, an example of an ordinal variable, would be like your year in school. Right? Are you a freshman, sophomore, junior, senior? Right? So these are these are words, these divide you into categories, right? But there's a natural order to those categories. Alright. Now let's step up to the interval level of measurement. Right? This is where we t we have numbers, right? We're in we're in the numerical hierarchy here. And a variable that's on our interval level of measurement right, is is where we have equal intervals between values of that variable. Right? So that's why it's called interval. We have equal intervals between values. Okay, our next level of measurement we call ratio. Right? Interval is nice, but we can't necessarily compare things. So an example that we have here is, is temperature. Right? So think about temperature. Well, there are different ways of measuring temperature, right? There's there's Fahrenheit, there's Celsius, there's Kelvin. Okay, we can convert from scale to scale, right? but we we kind of have some issues there. Like, is a is a zero degree Fahrenheit equal to a zero degree Celsius, zero degree Kelvin? No, there's no baseline to start at. Well, a ratio level of measurement gives us a baseline to start at. Right? It has a true zero value. Okay, so this would be something like age, height time, something like that. All right. So this is what we call our different levels of measurement. So we need to be able to look at a data set and think about all of these things. All right. So we want to think about well, who are we looking at? What's the population? What's the sample? Did they take a good sample? What are what is our level of measurement? What type of data is this? Okay, all this stuff that goes into it is going to dictate how we carry out the rest of the data analysis process going forward. Alright, so thank you for tuning in, and we'll see you next time.